Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. My parents never wanted to have me. It was very obvious and honestly, it was like one of my first memories. As far as I can drag it out, I can just remember my parents either screaming at each other for one reason or the other, or them screaming at me because I couldn't do anything right. It was horrible, and it is something that affects me to this day. Their explosive behavior had a reason behind it, though. I mean, treating someone so horribly is inexcusable, but if I have to give it to them, they had a sad story themselves. They came from very strict religious families where practically everything was considered a sin. Sometimes my parents would describe it as a cult, and there my very rebellious parents met and started hooking up. Their relationship was toxic from the get-go, being two very different people. They never got along, and their contact would be only limited to fulfilling each other's physical needs. Well, then it happened. My mom fell pregnant at the age of 17, and with neither my mom nor dad having a job or enough money to get an abortion, they went to their respective parents for a solution, and of course, instead of giving the couple a choice, my parents were married off, and eventually my mom gave birth to me. Now, treating me horribly because I was the reason why they got forced into a marriage they never wanted is sort of understandable to me, but the fact that both of them admitted openly that they never had love for each other and hating each other to the core, then playing happy family when my younger sister came into the picture, never ever made sense to me. I mean, make it make sense, goddamn. Well, regardless though, when I was about three, my parents gave birth to my younger sister, Ashley, and things just got worse then onwards. I became an outcast in my own house, and it was like I was practically non-existent or invisible to them. As I grew older, things just got more evident, not just to me, but Ashley too, how I was just unwanted in the house. I mean, these people would literally go out on lavish dinners and leave me behind with leftovers, y'all. So, of course, my parents always turned a blind eye when Ashley began treating me exactly the way my parents treated me, like a shadow. And it hurt really, really bad because I thought, Ashley would be the one who would understand because I had been nothing but nice to her. But nope. She literally turned out to be the spawn of Satan who did absolutely everything in her power to make my life miserable. Hell, I'd even go ahead and say that she was worse than my parents, but of course, I had no way of escape. Since to most of my relatives, my parents were sinners and I was their sin baby. Even at school, Due to Ashley, I was bullied horribly. So you all can only imagine how hard I must have ran when I graduated from high school. I was blessed to receive a scholarship and a full ride to college a couple of cities away, and boy, I never looked back, and so didn't my parents, who never, ever tried to contact me since. I mean, why would they? They now had their perfect family together. Well, in college, I made amazing friends and met my now husband, Jack. College was truly a great experience for me because, like I said, I met my lovely friends and partner who turned out to become my chosen family. So I completed college with my mental health in line, flying grades, amazing support system, great job, and an engagement ring on my finger. What else would I need, right? Jack and I started to look for a house together to rent and even started to plan our wedding. There the mention of my parents came up for the first time. Jack asked me if we could invite my parents to our wedding and my answer was an immediate and clear no. Well, I assumed that he understood, but nope. He went out of his way to invite my parents to my wedding and thankfully I caught him right when he was about to mail them the invitation. We got into a small disagreement, and it ended in Jack apologizing to me. I thought he understood his mistake and went through with the wedding. Big mistake. Well, we got married, 
and have had a very happy married life for the past two years. I mean, Jack would often bring up my family, trying to push me to contact them to amend things. And it made sense to me because he came from a place where family is very important. And whenever I explained to him why I didn't want to, he seemed to have understood. So when he suddenly decided to take this huge step, you all can imagine my utter shock and horror. It all started on a Sunday. Jack said he wanted to take me on a date and it wasn't a typical of him to do that. So I said yes. So I got ready and everything and he drove us to this very lavish restaurant, typically out of our budget. I let him have it though because maybe he wanted to spoil me. Nope. As soon as I'm walking inside the restaurant, all these thoughts are clouding my mind. And then it happened. As soon as I walked into the restaurant, my jaw dropped as I saw my parents on the table towards the entrance. I almost had to do a double take and eventually I realized that it was all true. What was even more shocking to me was that they were waving at me and Jack tried to walk towards me towards the same table. Now, since I didn't want to create a huge scene, I just quietly followed him and sat down asking him immediately what was all this about. My mom tried to calm me down, but I just hushed her, telling her that she was practically a stranger to me. I was getting angrier by the moment as my parents quite literally tried to parent me. I was almost on the verge of having a panic attack, but I knew I wasn't going to show my vulnerable side towards my parents, who caused all of this, and my husband, who had just broken my trust. So I just got up and left, trying to book a cab as Jack followed me and told me he'd drive me home. I accepted the offer and the drive back home was full of arguments where he dropped on me. Apparently, my parents wanted to meet me for one last time as they wanted to tell me about all the money they had hid. Huh? I had no idea what this man was talking about and I was definitely not going to listen to him in my terrible state of mind. So I decided to pack my things and just leave to clear up my mind ever since all of this happened. My phone hadn't stopped blowing up ever since. Not just with Jack apologizing to me, but my parents begging me to give them a chance because apparently they want to fix everything. I'm at my friend's place, all confused and conflicted, while she was the one who suggested that I post here. So, Reddit, bring in your opinions, suggestions. What should I do here? W-I-T-A? I decided to take you guys up on your comments and meet up with Jack. There, he told me that he was guilty to accept that he had been in contact with my parents for about a whole year before he let me know of anything at all or even make this plan because he wanted to make sure I'd be safe before I met them. I told him that even though I found it nice of him that he cared about my safety enough, I couldn't trust him anymore for hiding such information from me. He said he understood and apologized to me profusely, which I didn't accept, at least as of yet. I then told him what many of you all suggested, giving my parents a try and meeting them. Jack seemed very lit up by that and told me that he would arrange something. So we're about to meet them tomorrow. I will update you guys when that happens. I met up with my parents today and oh boy, things have changed for them. Apparently, my grandparents passed away soon after I left the house and they left them their huge inheritances since my dad was their only son. Well, they had now become rich as hell and were living their best lives without me, of course. But wouldn't you all know, now that I was gone, the next target to Ashley were my parents who she tormented like hell all throughout her high school. She got into drugs, would steal, and do so many sickening things that my parents were practically scared of her. It reached to such a point that they had to kick her out of the house. Now, I guess they finally realized who truly was the villain and kind of came to the realization that leaving all the inheritance that they have to Ashley 
would do them absolutely no good. So they apparently were planning to ghost Ashley completely and wanted to meet me one last time to let me know where they had hidden all the family heirlooms, their jewelry, and the inheritance documents. They apologized to me and told me that they hoped this would make up for all the trouble they put me through. My confusion increased two times ever since I found all this out. I didn't accept nor deny my parents' offer, and they told me they understood and that I could think about it until the end of the next week when they were planning to leave. Jack is of the opinion that we should take the money as it will help us tremendously, and honestly, I can't help but agree with him because it truly is a lot of money. It will change our lives for the best, but there is still a sense of doubt in me. What should I do here? It's been a while since I last updated, and phew, this all still feels unreal. I decided to take up my parents' offer because what did I have to lose? And boy, were they right. They hid all the things they promised me of in a storage unit, a whole city away, and I was left stunned with how much money my parents had left me. I mean, this money would do so much more than change my life. First thing that Jack and I did was to put a down payment on a house, pay out on what little student debt we have, get ourselves a good marriage counselor, because nope, I'm not leaving him before trying to make things worse. We have also booked a small vacation, which we will be leaving for next week. As for my parents, they have really kept their word and have not contacted me since these past months. And honestly, even if they do reach out someday, I would really like to have a chat with them. I mean, the way this situation went down truly feels like a feverish dream. And I'm just hoping that I sort of don't wake up from it, unless it turns into a nightmare. Thanks, everyone. NTA, you were fully within your rights to get angry at both your parents and Jack aside that you really hit the jackpot here and it was so satisfying to see your parents get the karma they deserved. NTA, but honestly, I would really consider going to meet the parents. I mean, just out of curiosity, since OP has nothing to lose, you know. I, 24 female, have two cousins, sisters. They're 19 and 16. I don't know them very well, and the last time we saw each other was maybe 10 years ago. They live very differently compared to me and my sister, 20. I follow them on Instagram, and they dress however they like, have boyfriends, drink, party, etc. You know, regular teenage girl stuff. Unfortunately, my sister and I aren't allowed to act like that and don't have the ability to because we're constantly being watched. My cousins have more freedom, but their parents don't know they act like that, and if they knew, they'd be pissed off. I'm not going to lie. I am jealous of them for multiple reasons, but I don't hate them. My sister hates our lives and has been fixating on our cousins' lives. I told her that I get it. I understand, but we can't blame them. We can only make the best of our situation. Well, the other day, I walked in on my sister and my mom talking, and I asked them what was going on, and my mom went, Do you know about your cousins? I asked her to explain, and she said, Your sister said they're dating white boys, and she showed me pictures on Instagram. I panicked, but eventually managed to convince my mom that their boyfriends are just friends, and that it's normal to act like that with the other gender where they live. She called their mom and asked her if she allows her daughters to have male friends, and my aunt said yes, because it's kind of impossible to live where they live, avoiding the opposite gender. My mom didn't really care after that, but I noticed later that my cousins blocked me and my sister. Understandable. But I was really upset with my sister. I kind of cornered her in her room and asked her if she was thinking straight. She just kept saying it was unfair. I said, yeah, it is, but how does snitching on your cousins just because you're jealous make your life any better? You'll still be here. She rolled her eyes and said that I need to stop acting like I'm a saint because she knows I'm jealous too, and I said yes, but at least I'm not turning into a bitch. She got quiet and started to cry. She refuses to talk to me, and our brother thinks I was really harsh. We're all in a tough situation, and shit like this was bound to happen. 
I just don't see why we need to make other people suffer as well. AITA? NTA, your sister was breaking the number one rule of being good family when you are all in a bad place and all want to be in a better place. You don't freaking snitch on people in the same kind of position as you unless they are doing something truly immoral like murder because that is cutting off your own support to get out of it. Your sister has just lost you both. Any support your cousins could have given you with their extra freedoms as they got older because neither of them trust you now or will risk being in contact with you. And you've been cut off by them too for her acting out in envy. Crab bucketing helps no one and no one wants to help someone that crab buckets them. NTA, yes, you were mean, but your sister has no right trying to hurt your cousin's life just because they have more freedom. Is it fair? No, not really, but you can't be unhappy just because others are getting things you aren't. I agree with life is what you make of it. Just got to roll with it and not lash out at those who do have things different than yourself. My husband and I, 32 female, to an eight-month-old son, Jack. I've struggled since he was born. I had a difficult pregnancy. My son had colic and my maternity leave was short. I was diagnosed with PPD and I'm getting treatment. My husband and I both have demanding jobs. I'd love to quit, but we can't afford it right now. I don't have many friends in the state where we live and I'm lonely. My mother-in-law is in poor health, and my husband is gone two times a week helping her. I haven't had a day or evening off since Jack was born. Plus, our home was flooded by a broken pipe five months ago. Handling the cleanup has been a nightmare. My mom, 67 female, lives one hour away and has never once offered to help with anything. We've always had a pretty good relationship. She was a stay-at-home mom and was very loving and devoted to my brother, sister, and me. She's an empty nester and spends her days doing yoga and seeing friends. My mom wants to see the baby if it's very low effort. I asked her a few times if she could babysit or run an errand, but she always says no. Once I called her at the height of my PPD sobbing, saying I was scared to be alone and could she come over. But she had brunch plans. I stopped asking for anything until today. My best friend of 25 plus years is getting married next weekend in State B, which is two hours away by plane. I'm the maid of honor and my husband is officiating. Children are not invited because the venue is unsafe. About seven months ago, we started looking for someone to watch Jack. We called everyone we could think of. After a month of searching, we finally found a babysitter in State B through a friend of a friend. Well, the babysitter called on Friday and cancelled. I've spent the past three days calling childcare agencies with zero luck. I finally explained my desperation to my mom and asked if she could watch Jack for 24 hours. Or I offered to fly my mom to State B with us, get her hotel room, and she then only need to watch him for five hours. I was in tears begging her. But my mom said no. She has a yoga class she doesn't want to cancel. It was the straw that broke the camel's back after months of no empathy as I flounder with PPD. I told my mom that since she is never willing to help ever, I will be cutting off all contact and she won't get to see her grandson. I know my mom is under no obligation to help us, but then she should not expect to see my son. AITA for denying my mom a relationship with her grandson because she never offers to help? You're going to have a whole lot of teenagers and libertarians telling you you're TA because your mother isn't legally obliged to help you, therefore you're the bad guy. Please ignore them. In the real world, relationships are reciprocal and depend on a lot of elements and require cultivation. If we neglect relationships, or if we only take and never give, they wither and die. And the give-take isn't always symmetrical in the moment. It's over long periods, even lifetimes, and often means paying it forward. We are cared for as children. We care for our children. Our parents help with our children. We help our parents. 
Your mother has chosen to opt out of all that by declining to help you when you need it. She doesn't have to be in that cycle of help and love and support if she'd rather go to her yoga class. But she doesn't get to cherry pick the easy bits of a loving family relationship and ignore the bits that take work. You are both entitled to set down the terms of your relationship. She has, now you are. I'm sorry this is painful and I hope you get effective help with the PPD. NTA. NTA, it's one thing to refuse to babysit or run an errand or whatever. But when your child, and the fact you're an adult doesn't matter, calls you crying, saying they are terrified of being alone, and are clearly in distress, and you choose brunch? No, just no. I would have cut my parent off for that right there.